Hey y'all, happy Tuesday. So I love our time together because when I talk the word with you, then it reiterates it in me, presses it down, <laughs> and I get excited talking about the word because it reminds me of truth and not just what I see. When we dig into this, I'm reminded of truth. So I am wise. Have you ever found yourself in a situation that was just over your head? <laughs> Stop. Yes. Is anybody there right now? Yes. How many situations would you like for me to name that I feel like um, a little bit like the 10 spies that came back and reported, you know, um, their giants in the land and we were as grasshoppers in their sight and so we are in our own. So I, we look at these situations, we look at life, let's just be honest, and think, what am I doing here? How did I get here? Why am I here? I should not be in this place. Um, and it happens frequently, you know, but when we belong to the Father, we live a life that doesn't really make sense in the natural, right? Which is why we must have His wisdom. So, have you ever found yourself in a situation that was just over your head? <laughs> I have, and to be honest, it happens frequently. What do you do when you find yourself in such a situation? Okay, this, this is key. The enemy works in chaos and confusion. If he can keep us spinning in circles of worry and wondering, then our focus is prevented from being set on the Prince of Peace, Wisdom himself. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 1 24 that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. We are in Christ and therefore have access to the wisdom of God. Just let's think about that for a few minutes. That we come up to situations and I told my husband that one night this week. I said, you know, I'm jumping off a bridge I'm not even at yet. But that's what the enemy does. We get here and we don't understand and we don't see what's going on and we do not know what to do. But instead of just stopping so many times, we do play out a million different scenarios or, you know, all of the what ifs. And it's chaos and confusion. And he has us spinning in circles of worry and wondering. And if we are worrying and wondering, then our focus is prevented from being set on the Prince of Peace. The one who said, come to me, take my yoke upon you. And so we are wrong. I don't really like saying that, but it's true. If I continue in the tailspin rather than stopping and remembering who he is and who I am to him. And so if Christ is the wisdom of God, and I am in Christ, then I have access to the wisdom of God. I am not left out. I am not left alone. I am not left without. I have access. The Holy Spirit reveals wisdom to us. John 16, 14, this is from um Jesus' last supper with his disciples. And again, I've said this so many times and I will say it every time. This is the last time that Jesus had them before he entered into his passion, before he was arrested. And so all think about the most important, important, important things that he would have been reminding them and telling them in preparation for what was to come. 
So I take these verses, they're all important, but I want you to get the framework or the context that this verse comes from. So John 16, 14 says, He, Jesus is talking about the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, He will honor and glorify me because He will take of, receive what is mine, and He will reveal it, declare it, disclose it, and transmit it to you. So, Jesus is the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit has been given to us, and he takes what belongs to Jesus, who Jesus is, that wisdom, and reveals it to us. That's good news. We'll pick up here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.